advantage of, the, of Hippolyte not knowing anything about him and the disadvantage of perhaps not having had very long to prepare for the fight. Uh, it looks like he's uh, forgotten to take his uh, hip piece well, off there. Uh, I'm not certain. So, we've seen some other Muay Thai fights yeah. earlier where they've not been doing the ritual dance, the Ram Moy. They may be doing it with this fight. If they're doing it with this fight, he'll have kept it on for that reason. Or he may be keeping on until the last minute again. to get as much Basically. of the good energy as possible from the uh, Buddhist yeah, tradition. Uh, he's going to need every ounce he can get, I think. There's a deadly hush around here. I shouldn't think it'll last too long, but uh, you think the crowd are expecting an early knockout? I think the crowd are hoping for one because Hippolyte's a very popular local fighter. And um, there's nothing the crowd loves more than a good mismatch with a nice bit of blood and guts. And the referee bringing him to the centre of the ring. No instructions and they're off. And uh, I think we're seeing a feeling out phase here at the beginning of the first round. Neither man knows much about the other and they're just putting in a few exploratory techniques. They see the low kick coming in from Hippo. Hippo, yeah, a bit of an um, unfortunate name that really. It is really, for such a thin and well-built fellow. But I suppose an obvious uh, contraction of Hippolyte. I can tell you, he has got a lovely smile, but uh, you won't be able to see it with his gum shield in. Obviously. That's right, yes. Not unless he knocks the other man out. And they really are being very cagey. This is, this is normal practice. When you don't know much about the opponent, you don't go out bombing at the beginning of the first round. You're feeling the guy out and seeing what techniques he's got. Can we just go over the rules once again, Bay? Certainly. Well, in uh, the Muay Thai fight, which this is, you're practically allowed everything but the kitchen sink. It's easy to say what you're not allowed to do. Under these rules, you're not allowed to elbow or knee to the head, and um, you're not allowed to strike to the groin or to the back, to the spine. Um, other than that, you've got kicks, knees, grappling, elbowing to the body. Um, if the two fighters do get in close and start grappling, the referee will stop them grappling when he feels that the technique is dead, when he feels that there's not a lot happening. It's, a lot of it is down to the referee's discretion as to when to separate the fighters. And a push front kick bouncing off Hippolyte there. He's got very good stance and he's absorbing a kick on the abdomen. They're very well conditioned towards the uh, middle part of the body, these Thai fighters. They can take an enormous amount of punishment because they are receiving full power shots all over the body with knees and elbows as well as the usual hands and feet that we see in uh, some of the other competition formats. Uh, if we were to uh, take a look under uh, Ivan's pink shorts there, we wouldn't see uh, a plastic guard there, would we? No, they have a very uh, a metal one. There's a, they, they are a very solid guard indeed. And uh, it's very necessary with all the knees that can be flying during these fights. I mean, you can cause serious damage to the groin area with a knee technique. I bet you can. Yes, yes. As Ivan may find out if any of his girlfriends meet each other. Oh, and a slip there from Benassir, he's pushed back towards a neutral corner. Oh, and now I think uh, Hippo has found the range. He was moving there with punching and now they're in close. And you can see the Frenchman trying to bring in the knee. That's rather an unorthodox hold there. Normally they clinch around the neck. That was actually around the body. Yeah, it looks and very I passionate, Bay. Yeah, yes indeed, yes. And uh, very slow start to this fight. It I, is, I, I was thought it would have, I thought it would have sped up by this stage, but I, I think still Hippo is very reluctant to commit himself. Oh, and a nice right hand there. And he's got Banashi backed up in the corner, but he's... He seemed very reluctant there too to follow up. Again, I think he's been very cagey in the first round. And the second is certainly uh, going to be faster than the first. You can see just the, the body language of uh, Hippo. Look at him moving those arms. He's really hyped up now. I think he's figured out that the other guy's not going to be much challenge. Now they're in grappling range. Again, they've gone for the body grappling. And they're trying to get leverage here. The referee moving in to separate them. Obviously, he felt the technique was dead at that point. And Baldazar firing a kick a bit short there. Well, that was a nice right hand, but it was slipped by Hippo. Back in grappling range again. And you can see them shifting grappling positions from the neck to the body. If they go to the neck, they're normally going to throw the knee in. If they go to the body, they're levering for a position to get leverage to throw the other man down to the ground. Whoever lands on top is uh, given more points than whoever's on the receiving end, understandably. 
and I'm really looking for both men to up their work rate here in the second. Um, uh, the first round was very slow indeed. And <laughs> that's another point. Uh, obviously the fighters cannot grab each other from behind. They can grapple from the front and the side, but not from behind. Especially not if they're wearing pink shorts. That looked pretty high, that kick. Yes, it was. And you noticed the classical Thai shin guard there from Hippo, but he didn't need to use it because uh, the French fighter didn't follow up with a low kick. So what exactly uh, is the percentage of uh, kicks and punches? Is it somewhere around 80% kicks? It depends on the, the fighters. I mean, I've seen some Thai fights which I would say were 80% grappling. Um, and that tends to happen if you've got two guys who know they can bang and they know they can kick hard. So obviously they don't want to fight at that range. They go in for the grappling. Um, but the low kick is used a lot. And uh, what separates the men from the boys in, in, in Muay Thai is how well you can block and counter the low kick, how well you can deliver it and how you can take it. I mean, you see fights where uh, Obviously one of the fighters is not trained in the low kick and it will never go past the first round. Because you can take a hell of a lot of punishment to the head and body, but if your legs are gone then that's it. And um, obviously both of these men are well trained in low kick. Nice knee. And they're... Um so what, about a minute to go in the fifth? That's right, and look at Hippo moving in there. A solid left to the chin of the Frenchman. Now he's bringing in the round knee. And Van Azir, I think, on the serious receiving end. An elbow to the head there, an illegal technique. And you saw Van Azir signal to the referee that in the heat of the moment, Hippo had fired in an elbow to the head. Classical tie clinching there for the Frenchman. But doesn't seem to have bothered the Dutch fighter much. He's coming in. He's coming in bombing. Round knee. And Ben is, I think, is seriously out of puff at this stage. He was breathing through his mouth. Whenever you see that in a fighter, it means he's running low on stamina. And that was a good last round. That was a, the strongest round yet. Nice showmanship from Hippolyte.